Well, that was a, a wonderful time of worship, wasn't it? What a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. Very, very powerful. And just really want to uh, commend our worship team and uh, just really want to thank them. Not just for Pastor Noel looks fantastic in his new coat, but because of the, the way that the presence of God uh, was really ushered in today. And I just really want to honour Kayleen too. Uh, a wonderful job leading. Um, because just for the, the prophetic nature, not the way that you lead, is very prophetic, but also because of the choice of songs. Um, the Holy Spirit, well, I shouldn't be amazed, but He always amazes me, the way the Holy Spirit works, the way that He weaves things together. Um, I'm actually talking about overflowing praise today. And some of you might think, oh yes, well, Pastor Chris has spoken to Kayleen, given her the topic and said, please make a list of songs on this. I haven't done that. And I... I trust the Holy Spirit and Kayleen very sensitive to the Holy Spirit and uh, so all the songs we're singing about today were about praise uh, about praising God and, and and doing that right from the first song all the way through so bless you for your sensitivity in that and also the word that prophetic word that you brought forth as well was about the garment of praise putting on praise so I think the Holy Spirit is already doing something here this morning he's already confirming his word so I, I praise God for that uh, it's always encouraging sometimes when you're preparing the word to say, Lord, is this really what you want me to say? Is this the right word? And then when God just confirms it in a wonderful way, so bless you for that. But bless the team, but bless you for worshipping God because if the team are just here doing their thing and no one's participating in, then the presence of God won't come. But as we worship God and lift him up, then we really sense the presence of God. And it's in the presence of God where God really works and touches our hearts and our lives. And sometimes we think of um, uh, the worship time is like the warm up or just the precursor act to the Word of God. Now, the Word of God is fundamental, important, but our worship is so very, very important as well. It's not the warm-up act. And, and I remember once when uh, we were going to a conference and uh, we're running late, we're pressed for time and we got there and in my mind, and I think I might have even said, oh, it's okay, it's just, you know, I'm just missing some of the, you know, a couple of the songs at the beginning and just had such a rebuke in my spirit about that. And some, sometimes, you know, you can come late for church and think, oh, it's all right, I just missed a couple of songs, you know. And I, I, when I, 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 many years ago, but I had a real rebuke in my spirit about that. Coming and honouring and worshipping, praising God is so, so important. It's not the ed, a little warm-up act at the beginning. And if, if, we, if we have that in our heart, there's something that's, that's wrong in our heart. And I, the Lord rep- Repent of that. Forgive me, Lord. This is not the warm-up act as we come and worship the Lord. And it does matter if you miss right from the very beginning. We want to flow in with everything that God is doing. And so I want to speak today about overflowing thankfulness. We know our theme is uh, overflowing praise, actually, not thankfulness. Praise and thankfulness, you'll find scripturally, are very much aligned together. Even some of the root words are are very much the same, interchangeable, although I'll talk a little bit about some distinction uh, in a moment. But I want to speak about overflowing praise. So let's just pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that already uh, you've already been speaking to us by your Spirit, Lord, Already that you've been stirring us, Lord, as we've been in your presence, Lord, and something already begins to rise up within our hearts, Lord, as we're in the holy presence of the living God, Lord, that we can graciously enter in, Lord, that we can boldly come before your throne, Lord, and we're able, Lord, to worship you and declare the wonder and the glory of your praise. And we thank you, Lord, for that privilege. We thank you for that opportunity to do that. And Lord, as we open your word, we just pray, Lord, that you just speak to us, Lord, uh, Lord, that you unlock some things for us today, Lord, as we learn about overflowing in praise this day, Lord, we commit this to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so main, well, I'm going to actually look at a whole chapter today. I'm going to look at chapter uh, Psalm 119. Now we're not going to read all of Psalm 119 because for, if you watch your Bible today, I really encourage you to bring your Bible because this is 100, uh, 176 verses. They're not going to put 176 verses on the screen. And I'm not going to read 176 verses because I'll finish the last verse and then I'll say, Amen, pray, and we'll go joy some fellowship together. So I'm not going to read 176 verses, but if you get your Bible with you, which I always encourage you to have with you, 
then you're able to turn to uh, Psalm 119 and you'll be able to have a look. But one particular verse is the, the verse I really want to focus on. We're going to, I'm going to refer to many verses through this uh, uh, chapter as we go through it. Uh, it's got the most verses of any chapter in the whole Bible. Uh, Psalm 119 and verse 71. And this is what it says. It says, May my lips overflow with praise, for you teach me your decrees. May my lips overflow with praise. And again, when we're talking about the word overflow, and we've looked at overflow in many different contexts of overflowing, but may my flow, uh, my praise overflow. And when something overflows, it's over the top. It, it overflows. It is a superabundance, is other words that, that, that are translated for overflow. It's something that just spontaneously and, and automatically just flows out and pours out of our heart and out of our life when we're overflowing in praise. I have the picture in my mind of like a volcano and there's a lot of pressure building up in the volcano and then the volcano comes and then there's that point where the volcano erupts and then there's this overflow of lava goes spewing out across everywhere. And, uh, and it's like overflowing praise, that, that eruption of praise unto God. And I trust that that's in your heart. And if it isn't in your heart today, I trust that we'll have a life that our hearts will overflow with praise in that way. So having that, it just naturally just pours out, overflows out of our heart and out of our lives. And as I mentioned before, there's a similarity between thanksgiving and praise and there's quite a lot of the root words are very similar and uh, praise and thanksgiving are very much the same. But what, what, what we tend to do, and this is probably more what we tend to do more than what the Scripture does, but is that we tend to put thank God more for what God does. We sort of thank God. Thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord, that you saved me. Thank you, Lord, that you love me. Thank you, Lord, for all of the things that God does for us. And that's good and proper. We are to give thanks. We're supposed to live a life that's full of thanks and honouring unto God and every day, every moment, honouring and just thanking Him for all that He has done. And because God has done amazing things. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, God has done a miracle already in your life. He brought you out of darkness, brought you into the kingdom of light. He's already done an amazing thing. There's plenty of things that we can thank the Lord for. Amen? Amen. And if you're not thanking the Lord, then open your word and you'll find a few more things to thank the Lord about. But praising God, I think really is more for us is the emphasis on really about who God is. It's more about the character of God, more about His attributes, more about the nature of who God is. And we've been singing about that today. He's our way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, some of the wonderful things. We had a word about the love of God and how God is loving and the, the love that God has for us. And so when we're praising God, the focus is not so much on thanking God for what He's done. Now, it's important that we do that. Thank God for what He's done. As I said, it's part of praise is thanking God for what He's done and very important to do that. But what can happen is, is that we can become a little bit focused on, I thank God because of this has happened. I thank God because of this. I thank God because of this, because of what He has done for me. And it can come a little bit inward looking, can't it? Because it's what is happening to me and I'm thankful for that and I'm grateful for that and we need to be thankful and grateful. Don't misunderstand me. It's very important that we are. But we can limit that. It's only about what is happening to me and the good things that are happening in my life and I thank God for that. But there's a praise that overflows that is irrespective of our circumstances. It doesn't depend on what is happening to us. It doesn't happen for what did happen or didn't happen or whatever. It's just about who God is. We're not even in the equation. It's not about us at all. It's not about, oh, thank you, Lord, that you did this for me. And that's good, as I said, good to do that. But thank you, Lord, for... But no, Lord, irrespective of that, irrespective of everything just seems to be falling over. If I feel like I'm in the, the darkest pit, it feels like nothing seems to be going right, even as we're singing. I don't see it, I don't feel it, but you are working great assurance in that. But praise has got nothing to do with what is happening in your life. It's not about you in any way. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's about God and who He is. And when our focus is on God and who He is, and there's that overflowing, abundant praise because 
My circumstances might not change or they might change for good or they might change for bad. Stuff happens in a sinful world. Life happens to us. But the unchanging thing is who God is and the nature, their characteristics, their attributes of God. And irrespective of anything, I can always lift my hands and I can overflow and praise God because of who He is, the one who never changes. He's always the same. And so we can have that overflow of praise in our lives. And, and even if you have a look at the Psalms, most of the Psalms are written by David, not all of them, some of them by the sons of Korah and a couple of others, authors there of the Psalms. But most of the Psalms David has written, the majority of them. And there'll be times when he's in the darkest pit and, and he says that, I feel like I'm in the pit. But he always says, but, but my soul, I will praise the Lord. Or Psalm, I think Psalm 42, he talks about, he says, my soul, why are you so downcast within him. Yet I will praise the Lord. And that heart of praise just bursting out and irrespective of, I feel like I'm in the, nothing about the pit, not about you, it's not about us. Praise and worship's all about God. And sometimes you might come to church and you might feel, man, I don't feel like praising today. I've got a flat tire on the way when I came through. I was in the car park and somebody backed into my car. Uh, you know, the kids were screaming, you know. Um, they pulled out the last of the hair that I had and just, you know, all of these things going wrong and you plonk down in your seat there and the leader says, let's worship and let's praise the Lord. You think, praise the Lord. You think I feel like praising the Lord at the moment? Well, it's not about you. It's so not about how you feel. It's never about us when we come to the Lord. Now, God in His grace and His mercy, He also does. He is and He also does. But our focus is on who He is. And if you come into the house of the Lord and your focus is on who He is, not what's happened, not about the flat tire, not about the kids screaming, not about it. Lord, you are the unchangeable one. You are the God above all. And if our focus is in the right place, Despite that, even as, um, as David said to himself, why are you so downcast, my soul? Yet I will praise the Lord. I'll thank Him and I'll honour Him. I'll lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And so that's the heart of overflowing praise that we want to have. What are some of the things that, excuse me, that stop praise? What are some of the praise stoppers? There are some things that will stop that. I just mentioned that. One thing that really stops people from praising the Lord is the sense of guilt or shame. Guilt or shame, it will do that. Because if you've come and if you come and you feel unworthy, you feel like a phony, you feel like a pretender, you feel like, man, I don't even know if I should even be here. Maybe you've come today and, and you're visiting today and you think, man, I don't know, man, the presence of God's here and you feel like, unworthy and 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 and, sh and out of shame and you become so so focused on yourself again you're not praising God and so guilt and shame can be like that now there's a conviction that comes in the presence of God in Isaiah 6 we see he's there and and, and uh, he says in the year that King Isaiah died I saw the Lord high and lifted up and the presence of God was so strong there there's this conviction he says woe is me I'm a man of unclean lips well then he had to bring that in the Lord got a cold and cleans that. If we have a conviction of the Spirit of God, well, then we confess that before the Lord, let Him deal with that. But if you've got that nagging where the devil's just trying to remind you, who you think that you can come to church, who you think that you can stand and praise the Lord, you, you sinful, phony pretender, the devil will try to bring us down and guilt and shame certainly will try to stop and block us from praising the Lord. And as I mentioned, prom problems, it's hard if you're really focused on what's going on and the bad things that maybe happen to you. Easy to praise the Lord when everything is going well. Praise God for that. Glorious sunny day, praise God. It's cold and it's wet and miserable. It's amazing. Some people's moods are detected by, dictated by the weather. In fact, it is actually a medical fact that the weather actually does affect your mood. Um, there's, there's a a pastor who was sharing with another pastor. So this is secondhand pastoring, okay. Uh, he was sharing this story about how um, where he is, I think it was in uh, one of the high Scandinavian countries where there was uh, some times of the year where there's only a very small window of, of a sunlight. There's only you know, maybe four to six hours of sunlight and the rest is all darkness. And there's like a gloom that actually descends upon 
people that on, during that time, their body clocks were all over the place. There seemed to be night and darkness all the time. And he was even had shared with this pastor friend of mine how that he had to really just, you know, push through. It's not about how I feel, not about that. It's about who God is and praising God. But problems, it's harder to praise when we when our problems. But again, what's our focus on? Where's our focus? Uh, but we're going to address some of these things a little bit later on. Another reason people struggle with praising God is just simply out of ignorance. They don't really understand who God is. They don't understand the depth of God's love, the, the, the wonder and the glory and the beauty of Him and what it being relationship with Him. Some people don't understand that. And so when they come to a church gathering and to a service, they find it really hard to praise the Lord. They find it hard. And, and, and just do a little test on yourself. And, and look, when I come to church, I'm not looking around at anyone, I'm not judging anyone. Who am I to judge anyone? In fact, you could look at someone and they could, you know, look like, you know, they're dying, but inside they're just worshipping and loving God. So you don't judge by appearances. We're told not to judge one another anyway, so I don't do that. I'm not, they're doing it. But look in your own heart and see, well, how did you go today praising God? Did you come today and say, oh man, I just feel so terrible. Oh man, how can I be in the house of the Lord? How can I be praising Him? And so you struggled with that. Or were you just overwhelmed with your problems so much that, you found it really hard to praise. Or just, you weren't, look, it's just the singing. It doesn't matter if I'm late for the singing, it's just the singing. Um, you know, once they get the singing over, oh, communion, that's good, communion's good, and offering, that's okay. Um, but we'll get into the Word, you know. What, what's our attitude, what's our heart like when it comes to praising the Lord? Maybe you don't even know the Lord. Well, I trust that once you begin to know the Lord Jesus and you come into relationship with Him, that your praise will rise and will overflow in a powerful way. We're going to talk about those things. We'll come back to those. Let's have a little look at Psalm 119, this super psalm, this long psalm of 176 verses. And uh, it's, a, it's an interesting psalm because it's, it's an acrostic, acrostic poem. So basically, um, there's stanzas, if you like, or sections. And each section starts with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So it might be, well, I'll use, I don't know the Hebrew alphabet. The, 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 some letters are different, some things are slightly different than obviously our alphabet. Uh, that's English alphabet. Some of you got different backgrounds. You've got your own, maybe your own alphabet. Uh, Chinese alphabet's a really interesting one. Um, but so, for example, the letter A. And so the first section might be from the letter A. And it talks, so, and every, every verse within that section starts with the letter A. And then the next section will start with the letter B. And so, and every verse within that section starts with the letter B. And so it goes all the way through. That's why there's 176 verses, um, because it's a long, all of their alphabet, and there's multiple verses on each one. Now, there's talk about who wrote this psalm. Most say that this is a psalm of David. Some say, oh, possibly maybe Jeremiah wrote this. I think the consensus is that David wrote it. Uh, within the Greek Orthodox, they believe that uh, David wrote this psalm to teach Solomon the alphabet. Well, I don't know about that one. Um, I don't know what that's what that's based on. But irrespective of that, it's an awesome and a powerful psalm, and it addresses so many wonderful things for us. And and it, it speaks of a couple of things. It speaks about afflictions and struggles and problems and things which were conspiring against the author, which I'll say is David. And most, some of them say a psalm of David. This one doesn't say that. It doesn't say son of the sons of Korah or whatever, but we'll attribute it to, to David. It talks about slander and taunts and persecutions. In fact, the tone of it and the things that he's going through, you think this has got to be David. You know the life of David, what he went through when he had you know, Saul after him, trying to kill him and all of the things that were happening to David. He had a pretty tough time. It speaks about all of those things, but there's a wonderful thing about this. It speaks about two things primarily. One is the Word of God. In fact, nearly every verse, there's like there's one, one or maybe one, maybe two exceptions, talks about the Word of God. 174, maybe out of 176 verses, it specifically talks about the Word of God, which is quite remarkable. But it also then talks about praise, and it talks about the relationship between the Word and praise. And we'll explore maybe some of those things 
together. But what, what I find really fascinating, and if you've got, if you've got this in front of you, because this won't come up on the screen, but there's a couple of verses which fascinate me. There's verse 88 and there's also verse 175. If you've got that in front of you because you brought your Bible along, um, you'd be able to look at that. Or if you've got your phone, your digital device, you can have a look at that. But it's interesting because if I was to ask you, um, the psalmist says here, Lord, extend my life, preserve my life. Let me have a good life, a long life. Let me live a long life. And he gives two reasons why he wants to have a long life. Now, just think about it. If I was to ask you, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're 20 or whether you're 100. I don't think we've got any 100-year-olds here. If you have, bless you. Um, you might be a 100-year-old watching online. Um, if you were going to ask God, I want to have extend my life, preserve my life, keep me alive, Lord, keep me alive, and I was to ask you, what would be the reason you want to be kept alive? What, what answer would you give? Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands or whatever. We'll be here all day. We might as read the 176 verses. But if it was to ask you, well, what, what would you want extra life for? Why would you want to keep being alive for? What would your life to be preserved for? Now, some of you'd say all sorts of different things. Some would say, well, <clears throat> well, I want to see my, my, you know, my grandchildren or my great-grandchildren. Some might say that. Some might say, oh, look, I, there's some things that I've really wanted to do and I've just been so busy with stuff. I'd like the extra time in my life that I can do these things or whatever. Maybe there's a whole lot of different things that you might say if you were asked the question, Lord, Preserve my life so that I might, what would your answer be? Well, it's interesting because the psalmist gives two answers to that, two things that he says. And the two things are, first thing he says, Lord, preserve my life. What for? That I might obey your word. Now, how many of you have that on your list? Extend my life, Lord, that I might obey your word. I don't think anyone... Maybe you probably thought, oh, family, yep, I want to, yep, do this and I'll do that. But extend my life, Lord, preserve my life, Lord, that I might obey your word. Pretty important, eh? And the second thing he says, which is in Psalm 175, he says, Lord, extend my life. Why? So that I might praise you. So that I might praise you. You think, well, hang on. If I die, I'm going to be in heaven and I'm going to be praising God and I'm glorying in His presence. But He's saying, no, no, extend my life here, Lord, that I might praise you. And so was that on your list? It was. Praise God. But maybe for some of us, it might not have even entered our mind. Lord, just let me live that I might praise you longer, Lord, that I might give glory and honour to you. And so interesting, the right through, we're going to have a look at these two things as they go very closely together, praise and the Word. When this, this passage, which as I said, it has, it mentions the Word of God. Got an interesting thing popping up there. You can go away. Thank you. Um, all the way through mentions the Word of God. And there's many different words that it actually uses. It uses the word, for example, uh, your laws, talks about precepts, talks about commands, talks about statutes, talks about uh, decrees, judgments, ordinances, all uses all different words for the Word of God. And it talks about that. And if you, if you read Psalm 119, you think this is a love affair with the Word of God absolutely honouring the Word of God, the preeminence of the Word of God, longing for the Word of God, diligently hungry, seeking, searching the Word of God and, and, and determination, I, I will walk according to your Word. I will obey your laws. I will. These statements all the way through that. Of course, verse 5 at the very beginning, he said, he sort of starts out by sort of saying, you know, Lord, I haven't always done this, Lord. I, I sort of fail in this sometimes, but then goes on through there and says, no, I'm going to be worshipping the Lord. And why, why is there such an emphasis on the Word and why is Word and praise uh, sort of married together in this way? Because the Word is what points us to the attributes of God. What causes us to praise God for who He is is because we know who He is and when we know who He is, then we are going to praise Him and it's going to overflow. It's going to burst out of our hearts and out of our lives as we understand who God is. 
And the Word of God directs us that. And I'm not going to read all these verses, but about God being righteous God. He is a righteous God. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten verses that talk about He is a righteous God, that He is a trustworthy God. Verse 42, He's truthful, 43, 142, 151, 160. He's faithful. Verses 86 and 90, He's unchangeable. Amen. Doesn't matter what's going on around me. God does not change. Therefore, He is worthy of praise because it's never about me, never about what's happening in my life. It's always about who God is and honouring and declaring His greatness. He's eternal. Amen. You're not alive for this life. You don't live just for this life. You're living this life for eternity. I had a conversation with someone actually yesterday talking about, oh, you know, their age and they just want to go out and enjoy the rest of the time they have. And I said, well, hang on, just think about it. The Bible describes your life here like a little drop in the bucket. So you're going to compromise the bucket, (laughs) the eternal life for the little drop. And I said, does that make sense? Because, oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, 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 that's good, that's good. So he was saying to me, yeah, that's right, it's good. It's, and it is good and it's true. Some people, everything is about the drop and not about the bucket, about eternal life. Maybe you've come here this morning and you're a little drop person. Your whole life is about, oh, what is happening to me in this drop? And the, I'm going to squeeze everything I can out of this drop or else I'm going to live for the whole full bucket of eternal life and eternity. How do you want to live your life? He's eternal. He is light. He brings light when there's darkness and He is pure. So the Word of God is really important because it expresses to us His attributes. And again, as we know the attributes of God, the more that we will praise Him. But again, there's this interesting connection between praise and the Word of God as we find all the way through uh, this psalm. And so this may come up, I think this will come up there. Verse 7, it says, I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will praise you as I learn. I will praise you as I learn. I will praise you as I learn. Verse 12, praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. Praise the Lord Teach me. At verse 62, at midnight, I rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws. How many do that? 106, accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Verse 164, seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. And so this psalmist understood something about the Word of God the importance of the Word of God. And yes, the Word of God is important because it teaches us how to live. It really is like a manual for life. It tells you how to behave in relationships. It tells you how to behave in your workplace. It tells you how, what, how to handle your finances. It tells you all the things about life, everything to do with life. But far more than that is it shows us who God is. And if you don't know who God is, get into the Word of God. It will show you the wonder and the glory and the grace of God, who God is. And the psalmist clearly understood that, knew who God is and and therefore was overflowing with praise and wanted to overflow, but wanted to overflow all the more and says, well, teach me more about you, more about your attributes, more about who you are, Lord, and so that I can honour you and lift you up. And so important that we do that. So the more that you understand the Word of God, the more you read the Word of God, the more that you will gain an understanding of who God is. And the more you know who God is, you cannot help but praise Him. You cannot help. You can't sit in neutral. You can't sit there in the presence of God and be disconnected and detached if if you have such an understanding of who God is because it always trumps our circumstances. It's not about our experience. The Word of God is about who He is, the unchangeable, the unmovable, the rock on which we stand. And the more that you read the Word of God, yes, it'll help you how to live your life and that's a wonderful thing. But more than that, it shows who God is. And you cannot help but praise the God that we have. He is an amazing God. He is the loving God that we heard about this morning. He is the God that is a good Father. We, we, We sing that. We really understand those things and we're just going to praise God with everything that we are because He is worthy of praise. 
Amen? The psalmist understood that. It's not about our circumstances. It's all about who God is. It's about the Word of God, not about your experience. Your experience might not match up with what you're hoping for. Your experience might even at the moment, it says, Lord, there's promise here, but it doesn't seem to be. So God above that, Lord, you are who you are. And as we honour God for who He is and we honour Him and we put Him first and lift Him up, then everything else just falls into line. Everything else falls into line. And maybe things aren't out of line, maybe aren't in the line. Maybe it's because you're not in the Word of God and maybe you don't really understand who God is and not giving Him the glory that is due. And of course, our verse, Psalm 71, 119 verse 71, my, my lips overflow with praise for you teach me your decrees. Know who God is. And honestly, look, people that get stuck, it's because they just forget who God is. Now, we can all get overwhelmed in our circumstances. Have you ever felt overwhelmed? We can do that because we, we're all learning, we're all growing. But we've always got to remind ourselves, we always bring ourselves back to who God is. It's always our focus is on Jesus. It's always got to be about Him. And even your own life, your whole life, your little drop has got to be about Jesus. When we make it about ourselves, then we're going to miss. We're not going to be overflowing with praise because we become self-absorbed and we become let down or feel let down and we don't, Connect in all of those things. But see, following the Word of God, if you get the Word of God in your heart, you will praise the Lord irrespective of the circumstances that will rise up within you. But more than that too, it helps you actually to live a full life. If, if you want to live a great life, who wants to live a full life? Who wants to live a full life? I'm sure you do. If your hand isn't up now, I pray for the paralysis to be healed. We all want to live a good life, Yes. Of course we do. And it tells us there's a promise right at the very beginning of this psalm, verse 2. It says, Blessed are those, and this will come up, blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all of their heart. With all of their heart. Lord, I, I want to know your word because I want to obey it. I want to walk according your way, Lord, because I want to honour you. Um, I don't want to obey your word because I'm afraid of punishment. Love. It's got nothing to do with, with, with being fear of punishment. I want to obey you, God, because I love you with all that I am. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to let you down. And we're actually talking with someone about parenting the other day and saying, you know, the, the point was, yeah, out of love, not out of fear. And I want to obey God, not because I'm fearful of God. And yes, I'm aware that God is an awesome God. He is a mighty God and there's a reverence uh, for God. He is holy and I don't want to mess with that. But more than that, I want to obey God because I love Him. And, and the more that you read the Word of God, the more you understand who God is, the more you will love Him. You can't help love God. God is so lovable. You see that cute little puppy and you think, oh, little puppy, just so lovable little puppy. You can't help but want to cuddle the little puppy. Just as lovable. God is not just a little puppy, I can tell you. He is infinitely more lovable than a little puppy. God is worthy of our love and our affection. He is just worthy of our praise. And so if you wanted to bless light, the Word of God. Don't skimp on that. Seek Him with all your heart. Psalm 119, the same Psalm, verse 45 says, I walk about in freedom. I walk about in freedom because I've sought out your precepts. I've called out the law, your word, the ways of God. See, people think that if I come a Christian, if I give my life to Christ, then I'm going to come under a whole bunch of laws and a whole bunch of rules and can't do this and can't do that. I walk about in freedom. You truly want to be free? You give your life to Jesus Christ. You will not know what freedom is. People think they're giving up their freedom to become a Christian. You're actually giving up slavery to become a Christian. You're giving up bondage to become a Christian. You're giving up fear, shame, all of the things, the insecurities, all of the things that dog you. You surrender all of those things, but you surrender the sin, the little drop that you think is giving you all the squeeze and a little bit of pleasure out, which means nothing in eternity other than you miss out on all that God has for you and you will face judgment from a holy God, but that's another issue. But if we want a full God, if you want to be free, then get the Word of God and live according to His Word. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
It's not a crushing burden of all this stuff we've got to do. Because when you love God, you just love God. And there's a joy and there's a freedom and you cannot help but praise Him. You cannot help but praise Him. But just as we finish, what about the guilt and shame bit? What if, what if the guilt and shame is the thing? You just, oh look, it's fantastic. But whenever I sense the presence of God, I always feel just so unworthy. And now that's good because we aren't worthy in ourselves. But we are worthy because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It says but we can come boldly before the throne of grace because of Jesus, not because of us. We're never going to make it because of us because it's not about us. It's about Jesus. Amen. It's always about Jesus. And so we give our heart to Jesus. But dealing with guilt and shame. And again, the psalmist in Psalm 119, this incredible psalm, addresses that in verse 132. And that will come up, it says this, Turn to me and have mercy on me as you always do to those who love your name. As you always do. As you always do. Not sometimes. God always will forgive us. If we bring our sin before the Lord, He is faithful and just to forgive us if we confess our sins to Him. He forgive us for all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9. If we bring our sin before the Lord, He will deal with that. And when we've dealt with it and we say, Lord, no, oh Lord, I don't want to be like that, Lord. I'm going to go according to Your Word. And, and, and not because I'm afraid that You're going to punish me for that, but Lord, because I just want to love You. And I don't want to put anything between us, Lord. I want to love you. And so if there's conviction by the Spirit, then you deal with it straight away. Lord, forgive me of that. Great time to do that is around communion when we're celebrating the forgiveness that we have through the blood of Jesus Christ. Great time to do that. We have communion and then we have this time where we are just praising God and overflowing with all of our heart because we love Him and so much. And so you always forgives us. But those who love His name, if you're not in a relationship with Jesus Christ, learn to love Him. Learn to surrender. Give your heart to Him. Ask forgiveness for the junk and rubbish of your life. Accept the, the wonder and the glory of the wonderful new life that He gives us. And then you, you're not going to have guilt and shame. When the devil comes knocking and tries to remind you of stuff, you say, devil, get lost. Jesus has dealt with that on the cross. And He also dealt with you. So you get out of here. You get away from me. I'm not going to give in to your guilt. I'm not going to give in to your shame. Okay, so know the difference. There's a conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict us and you will know because it'll lead you to liberation. It'll lead you to freedom. It'll lead you to a place of forgiveness and repentance. Uh, when the devil comes a knocking, it'll bring you fear, shame, guilt, bondage, and rather the conviction of the Holy Spirit propels us into the presence of God when the devil comes, he'll actually try to pulls us away. He tries to bury us and, and, and separate us from God. So know the difference. If you're feeling something that, oh, Lord, I've got to get this right because, Lord, I just want to be, that's the conviction of the Spirit. If this is the voice that is drawing you away and making you feel unworthy and a pretender and a fake, and, and Lord, how, then deal with that. Bring it to the Lord. What about our problems? And the psalmist has an interesting take on this too. We're running out of time, so I'm going to be quick. Psalm 119, verse 71, it says this. It will come up. And this is what the psalmist said. It was good for me to be afflicted so I might learn your decrees. It was good. Didn't get an amen for that one. <laughs> it was good to be afflicted <laughs> that I might learn your decrees because it's in the stuff of life where we realise that God is this incredible God that is worthy of praise, independent of what is happening to me, but in the stuff that is happening to me. And as I draw upon the life that He word, word gives me and the power of the Spirit in my life, then I begin to have a revelation. I begin to understand that the things that I'm going through, God is actually showing me in that how amazing He is how miraculous He is, how He brings a miracle. Everybody wants a miracle, but no one ever wants to be in the situation where they need one. Is that true? Yeah. I want a miracle, but I don't want to need one. Doesn't, doesn't make sense, does it? You want a miracle in God, well, then you're going to need one. And some of you might need one today. And God is always faithful. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn from your decrees. And I remember the story where there's the 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 tower that falls 
and, um, and people saying, oh, you know, and people got killed and people say to Jesus, oh, well, they were killed because of their sin or what happened? And said, no, he said, no. These, uh, this thing happened that out of, even out of that tragedy that the goodness of God will be shown, that people will be turning to Jesus Christ. And so we go through things. It's so that you're going to learn more about who God is because God actually does work in your daily life. He's not just out there, I'm going to die here, but I'll die praising. No, even as I'm praising Him, I'm learning God actually does work in our lives. He does intervene. He does do miracles. If you need a miracle, He is the miracle working God. And the other thing that the psalmist says, again, in Psalm 119 verse 140, he says, your promises have been thoroughly tested and your servant loves them. The promises God actually do work. He doesn't leave you dying in the desert. God is a faithful God. He does deliver us in our situation and our circumstances. And so the psalmist will deal with that with our problems that we're going through. If you're going through it, God will just teach me how wonderful you are through this. Teach me, Lord, how, how faithful you are when all else seems to fail, Lord, that you will carry me through, that you will bring me through to a place of victory, irrespective of what is happening. And I'm praising you, Lord, not because you're going to deliver me out of here. I'm still going to praise you, Lord, because irrespective of what happens, you are God, even as Daniel in the lion's den. He says, if God delivers me, fantastic. But even if he doesn't, he is still God and he is still worthy of praise. And that's got to be the heart that we have. What about ignorance? What if you just said, well, I don't really know about God. How can I really praise him? Well, there's an understanding that the psalmist has in verse 73, and this is the last thing we're finishing here. He says, your hands made me and formed me. When you understand that God is the creator of heaven and earth, your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding to learn your commands. And if you're ignorant today, well, one, if you're a believer and you don't have that overflowing praise and get into the Word of God, <coughs> don't cut that out of your life. Do your own little self-audit. How is it overflowing out of your own heart? And if it's not, then check, well, get into the Word of God, find out how more wonderful God is and you will not be able to withhold worshipping and praising Him because He is an amazing God, irrespective of, of, of us. But so if you don't know Jesus Christ today, know the one who made you, know the one that loves you, the God that loves you above all else. And, and when you do, you'll want to live, live a blessed life but you'll live a life where it's not a whole bunch of stuff that I have to do. It's just, Lord, I love you. And there's such a freedom in that. And the best way to live is your way. It's the best way. Even out of this little drop, I'm going to have a great little drop because that little drop is leading me to have a great eternity, even far better eternity because I'm going to have that focused on Jesus Christ. And even, even if things don't go so well in here, I'm going to be living forever, have that eternal promise of Jesus Christ. What an amazing thing. What an amazing thing. Let's stand up. Let's, we're going to close by praising the Lord. We're going to praise the Lord this morning. But let's praise our Lord. He's worthy of praise. Amen. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I'd love to pray with you. If you want to come out of darkness into His light, we'd love to pray with you. If you're struggling with some things today, we'd love to pray with you. But let's just pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you are above all a mighty God. And Father, I pray, Lord, that we can just always have our focus directed on you, Lord. So easy for us to turn our eyes upon ourselves. But Lord, we want to turn our eyes on Jesus. We want to have our heart directed towards you, Lord. And to let that praise overflow. Father, if we neglected the Word, Lord, so that we don't know who you are or else we're forgotten, because we're so absorbed in ourselves and circumstances. Father, let us rediscover the wonder and the beauty of your word. And as we do that, we discover the wonder and the beauty of who you are, Lord. And then that praise just flows from our hearts. So let us be a people that praise all the more, Lord. I thank you for a heart of worship. I thank you for a heart of praise. The Lord, let us be excellent in our praise. Let us be abundant in our praise. Let us be overflowing in our praise of you, Lord, every day. For you are worth it, Lord. We thank you now in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.